Hey, let's open our Bibles up this morning to 1 Peter chapter 3. We're continuing on and our thought, the cause of Christ. And somebody would read to us from um, verse 18 through to verse 22 and then flip over to the next chapter where we're going to go from verse 1 through to verse number 6. So we've got some reading to do. It starts with, for Christ also, in case somebody's trying to find the location. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Amen. Like we realize not physical water is is it's just a picture, is it not? The next verse says it's just a picture. Yeah. Amen. The like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. By the how do, we, how do we get a good conscience toward God? I mean, through, through a particular baptism. Mm. Isn't that right? Yeah. One from mm. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized mm. into one body, whether we be Jew or Greek. Amen. We've all been made to drink into one spirit. Praise the Lord. Anyway, keep going. Verse 22, are we? who is gone into heaven and is Which on the heaven? right hand of Which God. Which heaven? Which heaven did Jesus go into? Remember, he was here on the earth physically. Amen. So, amen. And he's here today. So the only way he can be here today is how? If he's in the third heaven. One of Ephesians 2 and verse 6. Who remembers the story of Stephen? The story, that, that's not a story, in, in Acts chapter 7. And remember, uh, he said that, that he saw God, he saw Jesus at the right hand of God. Which heaven was he looking into? That to be the third. Amen. To me, it was a vision. Yeah. He didn't really see that. Amen. Yeah. Again, it was the third heaven. Mm. Amen. Oh, yeah, keep going. I'll probably uh, fuck you up now. Uh, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto Amen. him. Amen. Keep going. The next chapter, verse yep. one to six. Sure. For as much then as Christ has suffered for, for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he hath suffered in the flesh, hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of right speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Amen. And that verse six, it's, it's just, there's so much in there. If you just mm -hmm. simply read it carefully, amen, and believe what it says. Mm -hmm. Amen. It appears to me that everybody is judged in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anyway, we continue with the cause of Christ or the cause of the gospel. Remember, what does the word cause mean? Purpose. From last week. Purpose. purpose. I mean, yeah, the, the reason, the purpose. But of course, the language used, you know, using the word cause, it's, it's stronger than just a reason or a purpose, isn't it? I mean, a cause is something you give yourself to because you believe it. I mean, you believe it's your purpose, your destiny, your dest your destiny. Amen. Mm -hmm. And 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 brother, sister, uh, the gospel, Christ, 
is our purpose. He is our destiny. And it's like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20, he says, for you have been bought with a price that you glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We are no longer our own. And if you think you can do whatever you want yourself, there's something wrong. Amen. And we'll explain what that something wrong may be as we continue. Amen. Now, that verse 6 tells us there is only one gospel. Amen. It's universal. It has never changed. I mean, the gospel today, in essence, is the same gospel in Adam's day, the same gospel in Noah's day, the same gospel in Abraham's day. I mean, its cause, its use, its purpose has never changed. Again, if we turn to Peter, oh, well, turn, we're in Peter. Again, the first, the first chapter, Peter says, verse 18, he says, For as much as you know, that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last days for you. Amen. Jesus was not an afterthought. He was a forethought. Amen. Isn't, isn't, isn't that wonderful? I mean, God, God just didn't say, oh, oh, Adam fell, I need to do something. No, God already had it all prepared for Adam, for Eve, and for mankind throughout the ages. Amen. Now, remember typology. What does typology, what's the essence of typology? Well, the reality casts a shadow. Isn't that right? So when you see the shadow, what do you need to do? I mean, you look, you, you need to follow the shadow and look for it and look for where it was cast from. Isn't that right? And what's most important is this, a shadow cannot cast its own shadow. It makes sense, doesn't it? Amen? Praise the Lord. So when we consider the sacrifice that God provided for Adam and Eve, it was a shadow that pointed to the Lamb, Christ Jesus. Amen? The message that was preached by Noah pointed to the Lamb. Remember the ram that was caught in the thicket or you know, in the bushes? Mm -hmm. Amen. What did Abraham call that place? He called that place something because he saw something. Remember, it's called Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord himself will provide the sacrifice. Amen. It is as though Adam already saw the reality in the future. Isn't that wonderful? You see, a lot of people misuse the term Jehovah Jireh and just think about material things that God might put in their pockets. It has nothing to do with material things. Amen? It is a spiritual thing. It is a spiritual name. Amen? Telling us and telling those who are yet to come that God will provide the sacrifice for them also. Praise the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So again, so so Peter. So we turn back to 1 Peter 4 and 6. <clears throat> Peter tells us that the same gospel preached before Christ, I mean the Christ coming 2,000 years ago, is, is the same gospel Today, it has never changed. It says, for this cause was the gospel preached also, not a gospel, the gospel, preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Now, of course, 
Peter is using the example of the people in Noah's day, the antediluvians, so that there would be no confusion as concerning the dead. Amen? Because even in Peter's day, they were long dead, physically speaking. But he says even to them, the gospel was preached. Amen? They were judged while they were still living physically in the flesh with the hope that they might live according to God in the spirit. Amen? So, again, this verse tells us there is only one cause or one purpose or one outcome that the gospel is preached for and why and how it has been preached to all mankind throughout the ages. You see, today many are confused and have been duped into a false gospel, one that does not deliver from sin. Isn't that a fact? Amen? You go to any so-called church today and they all believe in sin you will, sin you must. So they have swallowed a gospel that does not bring deliverance. They're still in prison. You see, they need to hear a gospel that will deliver them from prison. Amen? You see, if we turn to Galatians chapter 1, and we say a false gospel, but Paul actually says that that gospel is not a gospel, even if it is, uh, if, if you like, spoken in the name of Christ, it invokes a curse. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, in fact, somebody read it for us, verses 6 through 9. I marvel that they that ye are so soon. Is that working? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Okay. Removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Amen. Mm. He repeats it twice. Yeah. Amen. That we might understand that there is a gospel that is preached that is not a gospel, mm. and the outcome of that gospel is a curse. Yeah. You wonder why people hear a gospel but cannot stop sinning. Yeah. It is because they are cursed. And the words they are hearing brings a curse into their lives. See, we must always remember that God not only hears our words, he also sees the intent of our hearts. Mm -hmm. He sees the intent of our words. You see, much of what might be called the gospel or gospel preaching today in Christ's name is for building religious organizations. Yeah. Amen. For building church buildings. Mm -hmm. Amen. For raising numbers or church membership. And the big one, of course, raising money. You see, even though, I mean, these false preachers might be preaching from the Bible, what is the heart intent? Mm -hmm. The heart intent is not for the people. It is for themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, the true gospel will never point to man. Mm -hmm. The true gospel, its intent will always be Christ yeah. and always point folk to Christ, amen? Yeah. 
and leave the building of the true building and the numbers or membership of that building to God himself. Yeah. I know that from Acts 2 verse 47, yeah. which is praising God, having favor with all the people and the Lord added, not man, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved or such as were being saved. Mm-hmm. What is our what is what is our part to preach belief? Yeah. But it's up to God to add whosoever He will. It's like Paul said. He said, "I sow, Apollos waters, but God gave the increase." Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we will preach the gospel and not a cursed gospel, maybe then God would be able to add members to His church. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was thinking as, as I was going over this, you know, how in Africa they get so angry with, with me and with us because we won't provide the finance to build a literal building. Yes. Amen. You know, if you've been there with me, I tell them, amen, if you need to go meet under a tree, yes. somebody's house, put yes. up a tent. Remember, they don't want that. They want to sit in this in, in this little building with no windows mm-hmm. because they have been traditionally taught mm-hmm. and the devil has blinded them to think that is the church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And why is that so? Why does that appeal to them? It is because they are flesh or carnal or earthly minded. Amen. And we'll understand some more about that as we continue. If not this week, certainly next week. Because, uh, yeah, even I think I've got to change some of my theology. All right. And I'll explain that as we go. All right. If we go to Peter. Now, according to him, the cause, the purpose, the intent of the gospel is twofold. How simple is that? It's twofold. What's the first cause or the first reason from 1 Peter 4 and 6? What does it say? There are two reasons, two causes. That they might remember be number one according to men in the flesh. Yeah. That they be judged as men in the flesh. And what's the second one? That they live according to God in the spirit. Amen. That's it. All right. Nothing else. Yeah. Not, yeah amen. It, it's not about getting numbers, it's not about money, it's not about things. Very mm-hmm. simple. That men might be judged in the flesh. Right in order that they might live according to God in the spirit. And of course, as I said before, Peter is using the antediluvians as the example. They heard the gospel, but they are dead now. But they were judged in the flesh. Amen. If, if you, um, uh, I think if, if you know, that, that word flesh, I believe is the word bizarre. In fact, I, I think, all right, and that means, in fact, the Hebrew word I think is bizarre, which means the literal body means the flesh. Amen. And one that it lets me know that what I believe, I pray you do too, about judgment is correct. It lets me know that judgment occurs in the physical body. Amen. In the physical realm. Amen. But the sentence or the reward is after death in the realm of the spirit. Remember in Noah's day, they were judged in the flesh in order that they might live in the spirit. Now, my question is this. Was it possible for them to live in the spirit? Or was it just 
a useless gospel with no strength. God's and of course the answer is yes, yes it God. was possible because yes. as we learned last week noah found grace that's right he heard the voice and oh, for by grace are you saved mm. noah found grace in the eyes of god mm -hmm. amen it was not a gospel without power without strength Amen. It had the power to save. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the first cause of the gospel is judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. What does it do? It puts judgment on all of mankind. For what purpose? Why do we need judgment? Because judgment shows us our true condition. Yeah. Does it not? Yes. You see, we come into the world born of the flesh. Yes. Therefore, the flesh is under the control of the flesh until we are born again. Amen. When we are born again, we no longer live after the flesh, but we live according to the will of God in the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the cause of the gospel. Amen. What's the problem we face today? The problem we face today is man will not stand still long enough to hear the gospel. That's right. Amen. That truly saves. Amen. And that's why I believe for the most part, Christianity is rejected by a vast majority of mankind because they all believe they're good. Yeah. Amen. In fact, we turn to Isaiah 28, verse 15. Isaiah spoke of this. Everybody reckons they're ready to die. Mm. Everyone reckons that it'll all turn out okay. Yes. It's like they've made a covenant with hell or a covenant with death, mm. as he says here. Because, you know, Isaiah really hits the nail on the head. He says this in verse 15. You see, because you have heard, we have made a covenant with death and with hell. Are we all at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Mm. We turn to the youngs. The, the youngs probably makes it a little bit clearer for us to understand. You see, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with shoal, we have made a provision, an overflowing scourge, when it passeth over, over, doth not meet us. Though we have made a lie our refuge, and in falsehood have we, sorry, in falsehood have been hidden. See, give me an example of, of, of how that kind of works. <laughs> what, what is really saying? If you have been to a funeral, of a nominal Christian. In fact, even people who don't believe. Mm -hmm. What do you, what does the preacher do? What does the person up front do? Yeah. I mean, everybody's to going to heaven. Everybody's going to heaven, yeah. Everyone's going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And and if they don't call it heaven, they call it something else. How many people have you heard who believe that the person who's died is with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gone to a better place. Gone to a better place. Oh, they're resting in peace somewhere. Oh, Amen. Up, up above, up above, looking down. Yes, yeah. they're up above me looking. To, no one's ever, amen, looking up from down. Everyone's always looking down. Do you notice yeah. that? Yeah. No one is ever looking up mm. from down there. Amen. Mm. You see, the vast majority of mankind has made a covenant with death. Just like... As I says, amen. Yeah. Hmm. You see, why is this so? Why have people been so duped into believing this lie? <clears throat> and I believe because a false gospel has been preached and taught, yeah. which condemns judgment 
and those who preach judgment and embrace love and inclusiveness. Mm. People love the gospel mm. of love. Yeah. People love to think everybody is included. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, the church of God is not an inclusive club. Yeah. It's an exclusive body of believers who walk according to the will of God in the spirit. Mm. Amen. You wonder why people don't like you much. Yeah. Man, because you're exclusive and not inclusive. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, false religion, Babylon, has fooled the world into believing that you can sin and love God. Amen. Isn't that true? Yeah. But you know, there's not one place in the Bible that you can find such a theology, such a belief. In fact, you'll always read the opposite. Jesus himself, his own words, red letter words in John 14, verse 15 said this, if you love me, keep my commandments. Then to add to that in verse 23 of the same chapter, John 14, he said, if a man love me, he will mm -hmm. keep my words. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. The very opposite. In other words, if you love God, if you love Jesus Christ, you'll live according to the will of God in the spirit. See, some say, yeah, 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 but God understands we're only human beings. It's just a mere suggestion. <laughs> just try your best. Mm. But that's just not true. That's not what Jesus, Jesus was not making a suggestion. Right. It is the reality if you are born again. Yeah. In Acts chapter 5, the apostles had been preaching the gospel with, with signs and miracles following. And next minute, they find themselves in prison. All the apostles are in prison. Amen. What happened? An angel of the Lord came. Just remember with Peter, it was the same kind of story. The same as um, uh, uh, Paul and Silas. I mean, the angel of the Lord came and released them opened the prison doors, but alas, they are once again brought between, uh, brought before the high priest and the council. All right? If you turn to chapter 5, verse 27, it says, and, and when they were brought before them, that's the, the high priest and the council, they, sorry, they sit before the council and the high priest asked them, saying, did not we straightway straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? You should not mention that name, Jesus. Do not preach his gospel. Amen. And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. What did they preach? The gospel. Yeah. Amen. What was their response? Verse 29. Peter and the other apostles asked him and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. That word ought may leave room for question. Amen. And the translators really used a bad word because that word ought is the Greek word die, D-E-I, which means necessary. It means binding. It means duty. Amen. When you are born again, obeying God and his word is binding. It's not a suggestion. It's not do your best. We are bound to the gospel. We are bound to God's word. Amen. It is our duty. Those are strong words. 
much stronger than what the translators wrote in the King James Bible. They used a very weak word, ought. Mm. Amen. But the original is much, much stronger. Amen. You see, the term born again can sometimes be misunderstood. Yeah. You know, we all, including animals, are born in the flesh. Yeah. In other words, in a physical form. Are we not? Mm -hmm. You see, the term born again does not negate the flesh. You still retain your physical form. It simply means a different birth, a different one. Amen. Your physical birth, amen, empowered the flesh. You want why people keep lying all the time? Well, it's because it's who they are. Yeah. It's their flesh. Amen. You know, how many people say, well, uh, you know, I'm going to try better. I'm going to make a new resolution. I'm not going to lie anymore. Yeah. And then before you know it, the next breath, they're telling a lie again. In fact, they've already told a lie by saying they're not going to lie. <laughs> they can't help it. It is part of their being. I mean, it's their flesh being. Mm -hmm. So what we need is a different birth, one that will give us power over the flesh to live in the spirit. That's what the gospel does. You know, in, again, in, in Acts chapter 5, verse 32, as we continue, he, they said this, and we are his witnesses of these things, and so also the Holy Ghost, whom God have given to them that obey him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. If one continues to sin and disobey the will of God, what is their condition? What is their state? Yeah. They are still living in the flesh. They have not been regenerated. They have not taken, uh, I mean, taken the different birth. They are not born again. Again, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. And I will pray the Father, verse 16, and he shall give you another comforter just like we heard in Acts chapter 5. Amen. See, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the strength that we need, is for who? The ones who are obedient to God's word. Amen. The body of Christ, which is an exclusive club. It's not an inclusive club. Amen. It's amazing how... People argue about the right as believers to sin, to continue in sin. It's just amazing. Amen. But the fact is this, you need to understand this, yes. that these people in essence hate God and do not have the Holy Spirit. Remember, let me repeat again. If you love me, Keep my commandments. The opposite of that is hate. If we disobey God's words, we are in fact testifying to hating God. Yeah. Amen. We count ourselves as a sinner. Remember, while we were yet sinners, lost, he gave himself for us. We count ourselves in that number. Amen. You see, they, they are still living in the flesh and are not born again. How do I know that? Romans 8 verse 9. But you are in the flesh, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he has none of his. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, we are still in the flesh. The solution is to take part of and take part of the different birth, partake of the different birth. 
Amen. A few Sundays ago in the afternoon, we, we were kind of a bit lost about what we were going to do, and we did a short study on the book of Galatians. And, and really that has opened up my heart and, and my thoughts concerning the being in the flesh and being in the spirit. Because most people think that when you read in the book of Galatians, it talks about the works of the flesh and, and somehow think that believers can partake of some of those or should be concerned about some of those. And what I've learned is that if you're in the spirit, those have no effect on you. You don't need to worry about those things. Amen. You see, I was thinking about Adam and Eve. And, and the Bible tells us that they were made living souls. Correct? Mm -hmm. In fact, when you look at the creation in Genesis chapter 1, did the creation start with a seed or did creation start mature? The trees were already growing, correct? Yeah. yeah. Amen. The animals, uh, they weren't, the, the, the animals, there wasn't a bunch of little babies. No. They, they were mature. They were mature, yeah. Amen. You see, you need to understand this, that Adam and Eve mature. were mature. They were growing mm. up, mm. but yet like babies, mm. in that they were made living souls, but they did not have Christ indwelling. Uh -huh. Don't they were born in the flesh. All yeah. who are born in the flesh are living souls. Yes. Until they come to an age of accountability. And we're going to discuss that in some detail next week. Amen. But everybody who is born in the flesh is made a living soul. Amen. So Adam and Eve were, in fact, just babies until they came to the age of accountability. Of course, you know what happened. The flesh, because they were flesh, caused them to choose the flesh and not live in the spirit. Amen. But thank God that God made the way for them. Amen. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Amen. You see, the vast majority of what calls itself Christian today or Christianity has no connection to Christ at all. It's all counterfeit. Amen. It hates judgment, but embraces love. You notice that? And truly, the two are mutually inclusive. You cannot have love without judgment. Yeah. I mean, see, what has caused iniquity to abound? I'm not sure if you've been you know, looking at the newspaper or certainly on the news, how the youth today are just absolutely mm -hmm. out of control. Mm -hmm. oh, In fact, nobody knows what to do. Yeah. The police are pulling their hair out. Mm -hmm. Judges don't judge. What's yeah. the problem? It says the love of many is wax cold. Absolutely. The youth of love. today, love as an love. example to us, yeah. have become lawless. Yeah, they don't They're not the afraid love. of law anymore. Yeah. Amen. And I'm going to put the, I'm going to put this out there. The blame lies at the feet of false Christianity. Yeah. That's where the blame is. We go back to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28. Yeah. See, if you preach a love gospel without judgment, yeah. then we end up with a law system like we have today. Well, mm -hmm. we can't judge them, you just got to love them. 
It's their upbringing. It's this, it's that. It has nothing to do with upbringing. It has to do with judgment. Well, sorry, mm -hmm. it probably does to do upbringing. They never judged. Do you understand? Yeah. Hey, I'm not sure if you learned this past week. We're bringing in a law now where you can't smack children. Yeah, I saw that. We're not talking about bashing children. Mm. We're talking about smacking children. I'd better Contrary get all to of what mine we're told. Early. Sorry? I'd better get all of mine in early. You better. Hey. <laughs> yeah. My other child's just arrived. <laughs> oh, I see him in the distance. All right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. The bad one. <laughs> is that the black? Is that the black sheep one? How come you weren't in the yeah. meeting this morning? Huh? You should have been listening to us, being part I'm, of us. I am listening to you. You just said Praise about smacking children. We're bashing them. Maddie, where are you? <laughs> hmm. Isaiah twenty-eight, verse fifteen. Because you said we've made a covenant with death and with Shoal, we have made a provision. An overflowing scourge where, when it is passed over, doth not meet us. Though we have made a lie our refuge and in falsehood have been hidden. Yeah. Do you know that even folks in the church of God are duped into believing that good people go to heaven? Do you know that? Do you know that there'll be folk today who call themselves Church of God who have absolutely decided the Queen went to heaven? Oh, no. no way. Because she was good. Mm. You see, being good has nothing to do with it. No. Amen. You must have a different birth. Yeah, you must be born again. I mean, only those with a different birth and walk in obedience to God's will in the spirit. Yeah. So God has a remedy for those who have made a lie their refuge. Yeah. Verse 16, he says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding place see god has always had the cure yeah. even from the day of adam i mean the medicine the cure has always been the gospel yeah. amen but what is the gospel what do we hear here it is judgment to the line first yes. and then righteousness. Amen. Yeah. You see, the only way that those who have made a covenant with hell can be delivered and see through that lie is judgment. Yeah. Amen. During their life, mm. not in the hereafter. Amen. <sighs> so many are taught, <laughs> amen, that judgment occurs after they're dead no, no, at the white throne. And God mm. opens the book to see how good or how bad they were. Mm. Uh, maybe they think he's like Father Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> amen. And you get rewarded according to your goodness or your badness yeah. amen it's utter nonsense yeah. amen the bible tells us that after death there's only one thing that takes place and in that in a moment you yeah. receive your sentence yeah. or you receive your reward yes, for yes. how you have lived and how god judged you in the flesh yeah. amen yeah. Judgment to the line. What is the line? It's the horizontal. It's the foundation. It's the level. And then it says righteousness to the plummet. And what's the plummet? It's the perpendicular or the vertical. True? Now, so it's the right angle or the 90 degrees. Now, what happens if the line is not level? 
reading soft balance. Amen. You yeah. have a <laughs> the building yeah, will problem. not be plumb, it'll be crooked. Yeah, because yeah, they've got a meet in the middle, haven't they? The plumb because the plummet is always at 90 degrees to the line. Yeah. If the line is not straight, if the line is not level, no matter what you do, the building will be crooked. Mm. It will not be plumb. And God says that when he does his work in you, amen, he'll lay judgment to the line. He'll make you level. Yeah. Amen. And cause you to stand straight. Yes. Isn't that true? Amen. Amen. What does the gospel do? Amen. What the gospel do is it stretches God's word to the hearers to the audience and anyone who does not line up to God's word is crooked. Yeah. And that applies to anyone at any time that applies to ourselves when the word is preached. Yeah. Amen. What it really is when the word is preached, it's a line. I mean, it is, it is, it is to measure your level according to the word of God. Yeah. And if you are not level, you need to be made straight. Amen. You see, the truth is this, that if you will line up with God's word, you can be made righteous. That's the truth. If you will line up with God's word, then you can be made righteous and live according to the will of God in the spirit. Mm. Amen. You know, so many folks, you know, well, well yeah, you know, uh, yeah, the, the problem is that, that if we get too fanatical, we start believing every word. No, 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 no. Then if you will believe every word of God, and if you will line your life up to God's word, he will enable you to live according to his will in the spirit. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? Yes. God always lays out the line of judgment first. Yeah. Amen. So that we might line up so that in righteousness, we are straight or perpendicular. Amen. You think about Jesus for a moment. Do you know that he could have been killed? Well, we know in the Bible at least three different ways, but probably more ways. Amen. Who, who remembers some of the ways that he could have been killed? Okay. Remember in John chapter 10, what did they try to do to him in John chapter 10? Is that where they tried to push him towards the cliff? cliff there? No, 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 something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. In John chapter 10, they tried to stone him to death. Mm. In Luke chapter 4 is what you remember. Okay. They tried to push him off a cliff. Yeah, I was remembering Amen, but he somehow was able to walk between them. Amen? Because that was not the way, that was not the picture of what we read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 28. Amen? You see, the gospel reveals, the true gospel reveals that Jesus was to die on a cross that has both the vertical and the horizontal. Mm -hmm. Amen. The vertical and the horizontal. You see, Calvary is the fulfillment of what we read in Isaiah verse 20, so in, in Isaiah chapter 28. It is through the cross that Jesus laid judgment to the line and righteousness to the plummet. Mm. Isn't that true? If you will lay your life down and walk in obedience to Christ, 
He will make your life right and you'll walk in the right way, in righteousness, not through effort, but because you have experienced a different birth Mm. that has now given you power over your flesh. Amen. And the the reason why I I want to stipulate a different birth is because you don't lose your first birth. Yeah. You are still in the flesh and you're still subject to the thoughts and intents of your flesh. But through a different birth, you have received a power that that outweighs the will of the flesh and gives you power. I mean, you're no longer flesh-minded, earthy-minded, temporal-minded. You are now spiritually-minded. Amen? That's the difference. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, I hope you learned something this morning. Wow, and we're right on time. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Amen? But the cause of the gospel... The purpose, the reason, what the true gospel must contain. It must first contain judgment because people have to be located. They have to know their condition or else it's just empty words, empty words. People must stand still long enough to find out their true condition. And then God can save them and enable them to walk according to his purpose, his will in the spirit, because he gives us himself, the Holy Spirit. Does he not? Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hope there's been a help this morning. Yeah. If you need further clarification, just come and join us this afternoon at three o'clock when we go over this similar again through probably through a different voice and different eyes. Remember, this is a message Mm -hmm. that is missing. So many have been duped into a false gospel that just preaches love. There can be no love without judgment. Amen. People have to be located. I mean, even today, we have to be located. Yeah. In order that we might respond to God's message in the, in the appropriate way. Mm. Amen. You know what? People will never hate you if you preach the gospel of love. Sorry, a gospel of love. Yeah. People love to be inclusive. But you know what? I think Jesus reminded the disciples that they were going to be hated. Amen. (laughs) Because they hated Jesus first. Because people hate the gospel. But it's the remedy, it's the cure. Amen. The cure is not more police, not more jails. The cure is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God help us to be able to spread this message. Mm -hmm. Who'd like to close in prayer?